Uh, good morning and welcome to our commissioners meeting. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In our prayer for the morning, Heavenly Father, we beseech your divine guidance in this meeting. Keep us ever mindful of our obligations. Grant us, dear Lord, wisdom, tolerance, and courage that we may well serve our county and fulfill our trust. Amen. Steve, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Sure. Move to uh, approve the minutes of September 7th. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Uh, we'll move into our resolutions. First up, we have Andy Conrad, our county engineer, and standing in is Gina Frimmel. Frimmel? Yes. Frimmel. Frimmel. Got it. Good morning. Good morning. The county engineers has one resolution today, determining the necessity to close Smith Road between Spencer and River Corners, and the weekly permit list, September 2nd through September 8th. Uh, move to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Hambly? Yes. Sweated? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Amy Lyon Galvin is up next, our county assistant county administrator. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. I have uh, six resolutions for your consideration this morning. The first is amending the 2021 appropriations resolution by transferring appropriations. The second is expenditure adjustments for various funds. The third is cash transfers for various funds. The fourth is amending um, and authorizing the county's procurement policy. And what we did is add the federal procurement requirements. This will now be in a format that we can share with any grant recipients or subgrant recipients of the ARP dollars mm -hmm. so that they can be compliant with the federal requirements. The fourth resolution is allowing expenses of county officials. I think fifth, yep. And then sixth and final for today is approving claims for the week in the amount of $861,753.02. Move to approve the uh, six resolutions. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Uh, next, we have Holly Murin, our Human Resources Director, and standing in is Nicole Lee. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning. I have one resolution. I have one new hire at building, one rate increase in planning, a resignation in maintenance, and one retirement in maintenance. Uh, Move to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Sweated? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, next up, Jeremy Cinco, our sanitary engineer. Morning. Good morning, Jeremy. I have one resolution for consideration today, and that's authorizing the sanitary engineer to execute a contract with Kanawha Scales and Systems to replace the existing commercial scales at the Solid Waste District. Move to approve. Second. Got a motion to second. Any discussion? Jeremy, do you have a time frame for when this will be done? Uh, I believe March is the lead time on the scales. Okay, so, so and how long will it take? Uh, to install the scales, they're saying uh, over the weekend. Oh, really? That's yeah. really awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Hope so it really shouldn't impact traffic, traffic at all. too much? Mm -mm. No, that's pretty nice that and, they... And, and these, are gonna, these are the commercial scales? That is correct. So by the time these are ready to be replaced, will the residential traffic be rerouted around the other, the new... Uh, we will probably be where hopefully we'll have the residential campus uh bid out around the time that these are done so uh we'll still, everyone will still be using these re uh, commercial skills at that time okay all right very good thank you mm -hmm. roll call please Hambly? yes mm -hmm. Swedek? yes Hudson? yes all right thanks thank you jeremy and next up we have isaac smith from the Medina county park district Good morning, Isaac. Good morning, Commissioners. How are you today? Good. 
So I'm here to request a resolution of support for the acquisition of 15 acres uh, through the Clean Ohio Conservation Fund. Mm -hmm. um, this property is located on Medina Line Road right along the Wolf Creek. I'll move to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, Isaac, can you give us just a little bit of explanation of how this connects into uh, the existing park? So this is directly south across the railroad tracks from uh, Greenleaf Park mm -hmm. on Medina Line Road. It's also adjacent to the east from some property we own already on the uh, southern side of the railroad tracks. It's also about a mile to the east from the Brendel property, which is where uh, Sharon Nature Preserve is working on being developed. And it's part of our previous discussions with the, uh, the recovery funds that we're looking to do for restoration with the trail and the sewer line right. along there. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Sweater? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you very much. You got it. Uh, we'll move into our department updates, and we have one this morning, Laura Toth from the Office for Older Adults. Good morning. Good morning, Laura. Um, I'm happy to report that uh, last Friday we had just a wonderful outdoor event. Um, our luau on the lawn uh, brought over uh, 150 seniors, uh, enjoyed a pulled chicken lunch. Island Jeff played the steel drums for entertainment, and we had Richardson's on hand for Farmer's Market. There was even a Kona ice machine, so uh, brought to us by Devoted Health, which gave everyone the opportunity for some refreshment. The weather was perfect, <laughs> so that, I mean, it was just gorgeous last Friday. And the numbers exceeded our expectations. Um, it was apparent to me that so many seniors are just anxious to get out and participate. This is a beautiful day, a beautiful outdoor event, and um, especially our large-scale, uh, you know, fun events, uh, uh, people are, are ready to go. So it was very exciting. I'm looking forward to um, some things we do over, over the winter and then, and then next spring. Um, so I wanted to report back on that quick. Um, this coming Monday, September 20th, Office for Older Adults uh, will officially uh, reorganize and welcome the Adult Protective Services Unit. Um, we're happy to bring the experienced APS workers, Shelly Nagy and Stacy Webb, over from JFS. And we've hired uh, just a great uh, dynamic APS supervisor, Luella Gilbert, who's here observing today. Um, she comes to us with varied experience working at boards of DD and most recently working working for Child Protective Services. This move was coordinated by our office, um, Job and Family Services, and, and the prosecutor's office, and we all worked together. Um, we all had a vision of bringing all the senior services possible that uh, in Medina County under one umbrella. Um, and I'm proud of the groundwork that's been laid to make this vision happen. I mean, we really, I think, all have done a good job. Um, we'll begin collecting data and reporting adult protective services data in the months ahead. Um, and this unit further adds to our mission of keeping uh, older adults and seniors with disabilities independent in the community so we're really happy and excited about it um, last week saw the receipt of our uh, Western Reserve Area Agency on Aging grant application uh, this grant is a major source of funding for our different meal services outreach workers and our aging and disability resource center and it totals somewhere um, uh, uh, it's it's usually over uh, three hundred thousand dollars so it's quite a significant amount for us I'm working furiously <laughs> to complete the application and hope to have it uh, for your review and signature next week. Um, last week also saw the city of Wadsworth um, contract with Medina Creative Living to open the Suprema Cafe, which has been closed since March of uh, 2020. Um, we're excited to see uh, what Medina Creative Living has to offer uh, for the cafe, and they've committed to continuing the restaurant voucher program. Um, uh, Medina Creative Living plans to reopen the cafe in October, and we hope to reinstate the voucher program in December or, or absolutely January 1st at the latest, so we'll get that back on track. So I'm excited to see what kind of offerings they'll have. Um, I wanted to pass out our, our so meal numbers. Yeah. Have a, uh, Operation similar to what they have over on um, Reagan Parkway or whatever that is back by Home Depot. The Grand oh, Roastery. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is going to. Yes. Yeah. Right. So they have an operating bistro over there. I, in my mind, I'm not. I haven't met with Diane uh, De Pasquale Hager yet. But in my mind, um, it's going to be that and kind of in combination with what the cafe was, some kind of um, in between. So we'll see. Um, 
what they have. We have a certain nutrition requirements for the voucher program right. um, and, and things of that nature. For example, I mean, uh, nothing necessarily big. For example, there has to be a dairy. They have to be offered milk with every lunch. Well, that's not necessarily what's going on now, but it's something that they're willing to, to adapt to. So hours of operation will be primarily the weekday? Weekday, yeah, breakfast and lunch operation in the weekday, okay. which is what um, uh, Windfall Industries, who had the contract previously, that's how they operated it as yeah. well. Right. Okay. I know, that's good news. It is great. Um, finally, I'm continuing to keep an eye on our home delivered meal numbers. That's kind of what I, uh, that's what I handed out to you. Um, you can see they've gone down a, a little bit through uh, July, but we should see some dynamic uh, decreases in August. I don't get my data till the 10th of the month, so I wasn't able to get it turned around so we could have August data to look at. Um, it is nice to see over on the uh, right side that finally we've started congregate meals, and we uh, had 176 congregate meals served uh, in July, so, so that's a good sign. Um, we currently have over 170 consumer receiving home delivered meals. This number is up about 30 clients from our pre-COVID days, and this forces us to run seven delivery routes where before we were only running six. Um, we're lucky to have adequate driving staff to cover these routes, but I just have to continue to analyze are these numbers. It's been steady at that 170 number um, since we decreased in July. So all 170 of those clients meet the peer criteria of being homebound in order to receive the meal. So um, I just have to keep analyzing. At some point, I'm going to have to make a decision. We're going to have seven permanent routes and then the um, intermittents uh, after that, if that number continues to be high. Mm -hmm. We don't like to see um, drivers uh, uh, serve over or drive over, you know, about 25 is our limit. We want the meals to be hot and in that lunch time frame. So I just wanted to report we're still working on it. <laughs> Any other Very questions? No. No. Thank well, you very much. I will be on vacation, so I'm taking a, a month off from my report if that's okay. But I was looking, I won't be back till November 9th. Can you believe it? Two months, it's November 9th. I couldn't believe it. But I thank Enjoy. you so much. Enjoy. Oh, thanks. thanks. Have thanks a great day. Very nice report. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, one notice here of a liquor permit filing. This is a stock uh, transfer for RCE Midway Tavern, Inc., DBA Midway Tavern, located at 9977 Lafayette Road, Harrisville Township, West Salem, Ohio. Uh, we will not be requesting a hearing um, on this matter. Uh, we'll move into public comment. Do we have anybody from the public that would like to address this this morning? Hearing none, we'll move into discussion. Scott, do you have a couple things? Yeah, a couple things. Uh, first, uh, update on the courthouse. Um, so all the footers are installed, the elevator foundations are installed, waterproofed and backfilled, and they are currently installing all the water lines, the sewer lines, um, drainage, uh, and they're cutting the conduits for fiber to go into the building. So again, we uh, continue to move along. Um, we spent approximately $600,000 today. We've paid, we paid, uh, we've received two invoices from Gilbane totally right around six hundred thousand um, dollars the only thing that I have for discussion is we received a uh, letter um, from Cleveland Communications uh, they are the ones that currently manage and maintain our radio system for the Sheriff's Department and as you know marks which is the state system has been attempting to um, replace the the Harris system um, I know we currently have about $2.8 million in the Harris system. We current, we still owe about a million dollars in debt on that system. And the reason why is for interoperability. And I know that um, Cleveland Communications has repeatedly indicated that there is a solution for interoperability, which would allow our system to talk with the MARC system. Um, and we've been attempting to get the state to move in that direction because there are other communities that have the Harris system and have other radio systems other than Mark's. But the state is somewhat hesitant to do that. Obviously, they have a very large investment in Mark's. Um, and the more communities that they can get under the Mark system, 
the more revenue they generate to help pay for the cost of the system. So Alan Close, who's the president of Clean Communications, is asking those communities that are currently not in marks to send a letter of support to the state, um, really encouraging them to um, purchase this interoperability subsystem interface um, that would allow the different radio systems to communicate. Um, I did send, uh, I copied each of you on a copy of this letter. I also sent a copy to, to um, uh, Sheriff Grice. Um, Sheriff Grice had, had a comment that he thought there was some verbiage in the letter that maybe was too harsh. Um, and so, and I, I think I know which, I think he's talking about the, um, the predatory sales effort by Marx. I think that sentence needs to be taken out. Um, but I think if we kind of tailor this, and if I, if you allow me to work with Sheriff Grice, maybe we can tailor this and we can get a letter prepared. And if you're willing to sign it and send it to the state, um, I think we need to make a decision fairly soon on, on what we want to do. And because right now we've got, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty. Who are we sending it to? Um, this would be sent to the legislature. Um, I can't remember which senator it was. It was one of the senators at the state level. Okay. It was in the email, and I, I did, I'm sorry, I don't remember. I, I would think it would go to those folks and also maybe even the uh, Department of Public Safety yeah. that, that operates MARCS um, and yeah. any other interested connected party. Um, you know, my question, Scott, is it says that uh, in the first paragraph that we, we have formed this um, Ohio Public Safety Alliance network have we? I mean, I don't it, know that we, we, you, know you, we have not Yeah, you effort. have not been there. My understanding is that Sheriff Grace has attended the meeting that they that they held. So, so, is, 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 so is he a, I guess, quote unquote, member of that organization? Yes. So I think it would so be. So he's a, representing the county in this organization? Yes. So I think it would be appropriate for all four of you to sign it, both the three okay. commissioners and the sheriff. If, if we if we decide to move in that direction, and we can discuss it further, but I, I wanted to bring this to your attention. I know that uh, Alan had brought this, had sent an email, um, I think several weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I, I think we need to at least respond to him that yes, we're going to do something, or we're not going to do something. I know I, I shared this uh, letter with uh, Representative Sharon Ray, and as you know, she had tried uh, getting funding in the budget; it was going through for this very thing. So she is supportive, obviously, of the concept. And I think it agrees that we ought to be continuing the lobby for this, uh, just to, just because of the, uh, I'll, I'll say the aggressive, I won't use the word predatory, but we'll just say the aggressive nature of, of Marx and a monopolistic approach. And I really do believe that those systems like ours, that we ought to be uh, pursuing likewise. If there's going to be funding for Marx, likewise, we there ought to be some state support for this interoperability component. And I think that's the best argument we can make is to our legislators as well as Department of Safety and uh, even the governor's office on this issue. I'm in agreement that Scott should continue to work with the letter with Sheriff Price. Well, I would think that, uh, first off, that, that Sheriff Price needs to make a decision yes. think, on what system best suits the, the needs of the county. And so far, I have not heard him do that. Um, They've had a number of meetings with Marks to talk to them about, you know, what what the cost of going on to Marks would be, and and particularly what the service coverage would be across the county. And will Marks do anything about our debt and what we've already paid? No. Okay. Uh, and and the other issue is at least the first go round, uh, you know, it was something in the neighborhood. It was several million dollars for them to build towers and do certain things. And, and they sort of alluded to the fact that the county would be responsible for that. And Yet the and most cost-effective no. way to deal with this is the interoperability. Absolutely. Which is possible at a lot lower cost for the entities, such as ours, to actually uh, have that capability of interfacing with marks. And I understand there are performance issues with marks, even within our own county or even with the adjoining county. We had an incident over at the 42 Dragway, as I understand, mm -hmm. uh, a number of months ago, where Mark's radios were inoperable. They weren't, our radios worked fine. 
if I recall correctly. I so, believe that's and correct. I think uh, that, that yeah. says a lot for the system that each of us, I think there's certain geography and topographies, investments have already made, and it's unfortunate the state uh, is, has this prejudice or bias against anybody that's not affiliated with the MARC system. This would be a way, like I said, cost effective way to, to actually uh, kind of make sure that there's much more of a, a level playing field here. When it comes to and and where Sheriff Grice is at, I remember the it it wasn't Sheriff Grice that made the commitment in terms of the dollars uh, of the commitment uh, for that ra radio system you have. The Board of Commissioners did. I wasn't here then, but you. How much do we still owe? A million. A million, a million okay. dollars. Yeah. yeah. So no offense to Sheriff Grice. I mean, he has an opinion which I think we should value. But likewise, uh, the Board of Commissioners have responsibility here as well. Uh, an investment that has to be protected. Okay, I will. Um, I know I uh, left a message with Sheriff Gray, so I'll await his return wait, call. To be clear, so you want to wait for the letter till the sheriff has decided which system he wants, or are we going forward with the letter for interoperability? Um, I, I'm okay with I, this. This letter is is a bit um, lopsided, I would say. In more in more respects than just that one paragraph, but sure. or that one sentence, uh, I, I I think it's worthwhile to ask them, and because I think the mm -hmm. solution for the uh, ISSI is somewhere on a million or a million and a half dollars. Yeah, depending on who you talk to, uh, one one yeah. says a million, one says one point eight. Right. So, you know, there there is a cost to implementing that that hopefully the state would pick up uh, because it would. You know, there's a number of counties and, and subdivisions within various counties that are on the Harris system, and right. it would benefit all of them across the state. Uh, so there, there is a benefit to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, Marx was supposed to come back to us um, a month ago with a proposal for what it would cost to convert the county, um, and just so that we had some sort of comparison. Um, there was some indication that they could utilize infrastructure that we already have so that that million dollars that we have outstanding wouldn't necessarily be a sunk cost um, so at any rate from a service standpoint you know, providing a service to the citizens and residents of Manata County I'm not biased one way or the other we just need to have radio coverage and whatever is the best way of doing that is and most cost-effective way of doing it is is where I'm at so I think that squarely lies within the sheriff's purview of, of at least making a recommendation to the board right. of, of where he's at and what he thinks is going to be the best system from an operability standpoint. That, that's where I'm at. I don't Sounds I don't like have the a county preference. made the decision a couple years ago, though. True, but circumstances have changed right. significantly since then. Yeah. Because one of the reasons why they went with the Harris system mm -hmm. is because of the fire departments. And they did not have the resources to convert their systems right. over mm -hmm. uh, to the um, Mark system, mm -hmm. and and so there 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 were compromises or there were decisions made that, based on the circumstances back mm -hmm. then, that made sense mm -hmm. that don't exist today because these oh, I think all the fire departments in Manina County have gotten grants from the state fire marshal's office to convert to marks and how many police departments do we have on harris versus marks uh i don't know the exact number but there's a split okay so i mean it, it's well, it's, it's a systemic issue well, uh, and, and well, I, okay. I, I just well and the state has continued to subsidize over the last number of years and i was a yeah. part of that as, as, as the legislature of uh, the marks radio system because the public safety was pushing for it right and so that I, I i imagine the alternate has eroded and but there are a number of counties that have maintained that investment and have seen that it actually has some benefits with that that system. Uh, so if the if the solution is uh, that it, I know it under, undermines maybe the monopoly for the Mark system, and for those that want to maintain at least for the short for that period of time until people transition, if they all want to transition to Marks, and if the state wants to take over those ongoing monthly costs for Marks, right now they they subsidize portions of that then uh, uh, basically interoperability seems like the, the most cost-effective way to do that, at least for the time being, until you develop another plan of a statewide system that at least deals with some of those uh, issues that the Harris system seems to be able to uh, deal adequately with. 
and that hopefully the state can then figure out if they're gonna if they're gonna uh, basically subsidize everybody. Then. So we okay with sending oh, yeah, a little modified yes. letter, but absolutely. just yes. asking them to explore the interoperability in the ISSI. Yes. Okay, absolutely. I'll, I'll wait for Sheriff Grace's phone call, and uh, we'll get with him sometime, probably end of this week or next, if he has time, and we'll work on this together. And okay, okay, thank you. Can I bring Thanks, up Scott. an issue since Scott is here? Sure, because uh, it, it, it involves Scott. Uh, he and I have been had some conversations. With, this is with Main Street Medina, mm -hmm. uh, Matt Weider, uh, uh, Wiederholt had uh, a couple months approached us with a, an idea of moving the war bond building that's over uh, in the hospital, uh, Medina Hospital, closer to the square and put it on public property. Originally had been built over on the square, was in place uh, obviously during World War II, uh, uh, actually with a lot of research done uh, by Matt and, and, and taking a look. Uh, we had uh, Avon Costello there actually, one of the few places they stopped in 1942 was there in a square, 10,000 people came. Uh, I mean, it was, it was supposed to be awesome. So there's the idea is kind of bringing it so that people can see it better there and more affiliated. The question comes down to is what public property would be um, appropriate and who would take care of the building. Uh, originally, they had approached us to the garden over here, um, but there are all the alternatives. I would like the board of us. There's room for it over there by the garden. There's yeah, a whole yeah. area with that's still just grass. There is. There is. Yeah. And it's it's making sure that you have public access to right. it. Right. I think it would be a, a great stop uh, next. We are now approaching the 80th anniversary of, of uh, not only Pearl Harbor, but also the uh, World War II, and when spirits of the past and some kind of events that might commemorate and can at least be more in a public place that people can Who see. Who actually it. owns it? It actually, the hospital acquired it. The history of it, it went to the, a private residence. <laughs> they use it as a shed. Uh, very few of these still are in existence. Many communities, because they're basically a, just a basic shed, movable, no real foundation, and they get moved hither and there. It was preserved, and, and I know, uh, Scott, you said you had uh, a project where you... I, I, yeah, I painted it years ago, yeah, years and years yeah. and years ago. So <laughs> it, it kind of, at least the hospital took custody of it. They have property, they, they're willing to deed it over. Uh, the question is, to who, where's the best place for it? Who's going to to have the commitment of long-term maintenance uh, and for that. And it is, uh, since they're very rare, uh, most of them have been demolished and destroyed, and since this does have some notoriety and some success, uh, Medina County was one of the, the top, uh, I'll say top counties in, in, in success of, uh, of the war bond effort in 1942 and 1943. Uh, it might be nice to have that kind of piece of history closer where people can see it. If it were all right with the, you too, I think uh, Scott can continue to negotiate with uh, Matt Wiederholt and uh, with the other parties as to the, the best place for it, and as well as uh, eventually have to commit who's going to take responsibility for it. Well, and, and to approach the hospital. Well, they already have that. Yeah, Matt, Matt has already uh, worked out with the hospital. They're willing to, do, to Donate trans it? Yeah, transfer it oh, over. Okay. Uh, so, no, he, uh, Main Street Medina has already worked you know, this out. Now they're just trying to reach an agreement as to where the best place is. We have differences you, of opinion, I guess. Yeah. As well they as have a lot of land the and a new historical society over there on Prospect. Do you think that they would want it for their well, yard? Well, they probably no. Actually, they want it closer to the square where it used to be. They want to put it on the square, which is originally was between the fountain and where the gun is. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, that probably wouldn't be the best, but they'd like something at least fairly close. This used to be the high school building. Uh, there was even newspaper reports about how, how great the high school. Uh, classes did in competition for raising money for the war bonds. So uh, somewhere even close to, but the county owns these a number of these properties. And uh, if it's all right, we would have to, Scott continue to to uh, I guess work with them and negotiate yeah. and, I'm, I'm and kind of work that. through. I think it would be nice to kind of reacquire that. And I do too. Have it as a focal point. I just don't know where to put it. I. <clears throat> yeah, my, my, my opinion is you've got the uh, 1841 courthouse, the 1969 courthouse, and you've got that area kind of between them. I think it should go right there. There's a, there's room for it there. It's on the square. It's accessible. You could put up some kind of um, Even a, plaque or a plaque or something. Or something. And it, 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 they're increasingly rare because they were temporary, temporary only for the sale of the war bonds. But yeah. obviously at the time we were all united. After World War II, or during World War II, everybody came together, and Medina was quite successful in, in raising money for the war effort. Yeah. Scott, would uh, do we have anybody that could Photoshop that in? 
take a picture of the courthouse, take a picture of that building. Brian, I'm, I'm sure Brian could do that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I would like to see what, what that looks because, like. Yeah. Because yeah. It, yeah. In, 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 as I visualize it in my head, it, it just doesn't seem to fit there. <laughs> yeah. My my only concern is if you put it in the garden because the garden's fenced in, it'd be really hard to see, and people yeah. wouldn't no, people really wouldn't be garden, able to see it. There's a lawn outside. Right. Oh, outside right. of the garden. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a, a yeah. decent size. There's a yeah. There's a decent size area. Yeah. Yeah. It, it needs to be on a, on a concrete pad or at least separate from the ground so that at least the wood. Yeah. It yeah doesn't no, do in the garden is a no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So all right. uh, if it's all right with you, we'll have yeah. Scott continue to yeah, work with Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think on it's this. a great idea. All right. sure. And I'll send you, the, Matt, like I said, Matt did a, a lot more. I did a, a little bit of preliminary research, and he did a whole lot more uh, on, on those uh, buildings. So I'll make sure you get that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Super. Thank all you. Thanks, right. Scott. <clears throat> Amy, do you have anything? Um, I could talk about the COVID sick time if you're ready for it. So uh, we previously had some conversations, uh, just some informal conversations about uh, the COVID continued pandemic activity and the need for some uh, staff members to take time off. Um, you've heard some staff members have kids that have received notices that they are, you know, testing positive and having to stay home and so forth. So we revisited the policy from last year on uh, just to present for your consideration for a paid COVID time off if we were to allot uh, 10 days or an 80 hour you know, work period. But we would create um, a form very similar to the form that had been followed last year where the individual would have to list the reason for leave. Um, they'd be able to provide a notification whether they received a letter from the school or some other kind of positive notification that would suggest they need to stay home for a period of time for themselves or for their uh, child who's in school. And then once exhausted, any additional time off needed for subsequent exposures or time off would come off their sick bank or other accrued. So this would be 80 additional hours if needed for COVID-related illness for 2021? It could be for 2021 or if you wanted to consider it to coincide with, for example, the flu season to carry into the beginning of next year. Um, you know, that usually runs through the end of March. But we had talked about potentially setting aside a a little pot of money from the ARP dollars in order to cover this expense. So if we wanted to start with a set amount of money, we could continue to update you and draw off that amount depending on applicability. Yeah, we really don't know how long this is gonna last. Right, so so I, I guess I would agree that we ought to just allocate a certain amount of money and then revisit it if, if and when it ever gets depleted. Um, and I, you know, I would, I don't know how we will define the end date of the program um, of when well, I, COVID I, I, eventually ends. I would, I would my, my preference would be to go ahead and create it for to the end of this year. And then when we adopt our budget, decide on, on if we're going to extend it further and for how long. We'll okay. know a whole lot more how this, this phase of COVID, I know I've been reading some articles about talking about even a fourth wave or whatever. Well, so that's, like, that's what I'm saying, yeah. 80 hours through 2021 and right. then and revisit. Then, and we revisit for the, as part of our okay. budget. And I'm so good with forth. that too. At least put an end date, yeah, the rest of the year. We've got the funds, uh, the ARPs qualified for that little, little right. budget. And then, of course, uh, during our whole discussions here, when well, we start doing hearings in October and November, and we can kind of consider it by then as to where we're going to be. We'll know a whole lot more, I'm sure, in the next two months than we do right now. Right. And you'll contact Delta the elected area. department heads? Right, so um, with this agreement, we'll go ahead and update mm -hmm. the form. Holly can distribute that then with her team to right. all, and we can set something up through Kronos then to make, that makes it easy for tracking. If we can reuse one of the prior codes, right. or if we need to make an okay. additional amendment just to track it through the system. And will, will, will we need a resolution for next week on this then? Um, we could. Do we probably. need? Okay. Yeah, we yeah. probably should. Okay. So we'll get everything Agreed. put together then and formally present on Tuesday yeah. next yeah, week. Because we did a resolution during the first phase of COVID, if I recall correctly, mm -hmm. to establish this program. So I think I think we had to do another one. Then well, we'll we, follow we, suit. These are ARP monies, so you'll set this aside just like you've right. done the prior for the prior ARP commitments. So. Okay. Yep. 
Okay. So as long as we're talking about ARP. I would like to talk about AI. <laughs> well, Do you need me to stay ARP? up here, I Commissioner? Have or uh, may I sit down? I, I don't know. I have something uh, no, I don't to... think so. Ma, okay. <laughs> so uh, as I recall, we were going to talk about ARP today, um, but we're going to push that back. Oh, I had um, a smaller ARP thing. You're going for the larger right, discussion. Right, right, right. Okay. So, okay. so we're, we're, we're waiting for some programs to be updated and for some additional information on, on certain mm -hmm. programs. Mm -hmm. um, so do we want to set another target date for when we will begin evaluating? And have our little score sheets in because I've not done any well, score sheet because I neither have I <laughs> because we've had a number of we know updates coming with right. some of the proposals and I think they're substantive they're very important likewise we're not in a hurry to spend all this money down nor do we need to and the value of scoring is uh, is seeing I see the value scoring less and less for where we've got an agreement and we know we want to proceed with some of these it's just a matter of discussing how much uh, but I know we I, also have projects that need to make, make some decisions on. Right. So uh, we can't wait too long. Right. Um, so. And I, I, like you said, we do have some things, and, and we already have spent some money. So yeah. a, as we make a few decisions and maybe even, you know, some minor ones today, I'd also like to know the, the dollar amount that we're scoring for this year and to know what we've already spent, and mm -hmm. you know, which we don't really have just kind of have a guesstimate but I'd like to know mm -hmm. the actual do dollar amount that we're going to score okay so uh, to go back to our prior conversation about the sick leave do we have a figure in mind of how much we want to set aside for that Amy do we know how much uh, was was allocated and spent in the first round any idea of what those numbers look like well that was a much larger number than I think you may want to set aside that was somewhere to the tune of three hundred thousand dollars but a large chunk of that was administrative paid leave because at that time we were under the stay-at-home order there were only um, about 2700 hours of true COVID sick time uh, that were a part of that overall three hundred thousand dollars so if we wanted to set aside you know for example a hundred thousand dollars I think that would be very generous mm -hmm. in terms of that. having that allocated okay so sure. you good for that sure and this yeah. is what I mean by the little dollar right. amounts exactly. well, yeah. that exactly. were right. Right. right so so you want to put that in the mix and and in the matrix so we know what's left over certainly yeah, that way you'll have a tally prepared, of right. what's been allocated and what remains yeah, I do have another minor one <laughs> so you get leaving well um, we have to redo the resolution for the um, click share the click share program because uh, JFF was left off the resolution so the resolution has to be redone anyway um, we got notification from the county auditor um, they really, the last year, have been doing board of revisions almost exclusively remotely when you look at the percentage of their meetings. So considering that board of revisions, they really are going remote, since we have to redo the resolution, are you guys okay with adding the auditor's office to that list and um, for the, their BOR meetings, especially during the flu season, if they have to continue to do it remotely? I'm good with that. Yes, yes. I'm good with that too. So when you redo the um, allocation, if you could add the auditor and the cost for the auditor on that too. Okay. I can do that. JFS was actually included in the original $116,000 allocation. Mm -hmm. We just neglected to list them out individually. So we'll oh, go ahead and okay. do that, right. but then add the auditor's okay. amount to that 116 to increase it by right. that differential. Mm -hmm. And I did attend a it's, it's meeting. Each one of those costs, what, like 10 grand? Is that in the ballpark? I think it was Depends. eight, yeah. maybe for. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, Barry. I think uh, the one that was left on the actually Board of Elections, but I just spoke this one. Oh, it was Board of Elections, not JFS. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I think theirs was like 6000 and 7000 Right. Yep. Okay. And I think the auditors would be right around there also. Um, it's just it's a small conference room. Um, no, they're, they're using JFS, I think theirs goes upwards of like $33,000. They had a small mm -hmm. conference room, and they had a very large like training room that they were going to be using. Right, yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then just one last piece. I attended a conference last week that OBM uh, put on to talk about the various utilization options for the ARP dollars, and they referenced that they do expect there will be changes in the final rule based on comments that they had received or the Fed, the federal government had received on the interim final rule, but their expectation on that publishing of the final rule is not till closer to the end of the year. Wow. So, 
But there's some areas that are more defined than others that we right. know. Correct. Just because of the uh, language that was adopted by Congress, correct? When it comes correct. to broadband, uh, there's wider discretion than there is for, uh, let's say, what, water, uh, sewer, yeah, first, or first, yeah, and, and, and first, yeah, first center. responder pay and all those kind of things. Yeah. Which A to date, bit. really, your focus has been on those ones that have been more clear cut right. uh, for these right. early decisions. Right. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think that that impacts some of the scoring considerations as well. Do, does it not? It may. Yeah. Okay. So Thank while you. we're on our, did you want to talk, uh, start the conversation about fiber? Okay, sure. So I know that over the last couple of weeks, I believe um, <clears throat> Commissioner Hambly uh, met with uh, LMRE and um, Padana County Fiber, and there was some discussion on kind of a partnership uh, between the two of them. And I believe that LMRE has or is um, amending their request and has had Medina Fiber. <clears throat> so Medina Fiber is asking for, originally they were asking for about, f I think, $4 million. Um, and that has now increased um, depending on um, the get ready costs on the polls. Um, it could be anywhere from, I believe, $7 million to $11 million with um, about 5.5 uh, required this year and then about one and a half next year is the expectation. So the question is, is can we go ahead and um, I guess allocate the 5.5 um, for Medina Fiber to continue running middle mile um, in areas that are not served? Um, and if we can, if we can just go ahead and, and include that, I guess, on a resolution when we do the um, Conferencing equipment just and the, the five point five for this year. Just the five point five this year, yes. So I, be, I believe that that still allows about ten, close to ten million dollars that can be allocated and scored. Scott, when, when will we have a definitive proposal? Because we had we had a presentation by LMRE and we had a presentation by Manana Fiber. When and so we're going to sort of this is kind of combine the two. But mm -hmm. when when will we have or when will the Port Authority have a a hard proposal from LMRE about where their position is and when where they're going to uh, where they're going to stand on the make ready. I, I I don't know. I, I think the uh, Ed had to go to the board and get approval for some things. Um, but I think once that's done, um, I'm sure there, there I'm sure there'll be some kind of an agreement that will be um, written or, or drawn up but I guess and entered into. What, when what's do we know what the timeline is for their their action? I know, Dave. Uh, so the NDAs were just signed yesterday, and the fiber count has been submitted um, from the communities over to LMRE. So I would say probably four to five weeks yet in order to, what, what they're going to do is they're going to balance the fair market value of the fiber LMRE that they will be receiving um, from the bill against an average of seven hundred dollars per poll of make rate. If that value of the fiber exceeds the uh, seven hundred dollars per poll kind of number of polls, then there will be no cost whatsoever um, to the communities or to the project. In which case, then the eleven eleven million dollars total to build LMRE and the Guilford Township project reduces by about three million dollars. Um, an $8 million so is LMRE in Guilford Township as well? No, but yeah. what we did is, um, if you remember, our first proposal was to do Guilford Township, part yeah. of Montville, and part of Lodi, and, and, um, and uh, Granger Township. Mm -hmm. That was the wasn't there proposal. wasn't there two legs in in the Lodi area? There were then three industrial parks, which were very small, about two hundred thousand of the three million. That was Lodi, Medina Industrial and then the industrial off of 94 insurance center. So what we've done now is because we have been able to um, work a deal with LMRE, um, we have <coughs> rewritten a submission, uh, version two, which asks for $11 million um, over two years, five and a half each, with the investors bringing $11 million. However, 
if we find out from LMRE that there will be no make ready because the value of the fiber they are receiving exceeds that or equals that, then the second year that five and a half million could be as low as a $1.5 million ask. But we really, again, won't know that um, probably for about four so or five weeks. Ago. The question for us is, is obviously uh, our support for moving forward with this, setting at least the money aside uh, with, from the um, ARP dollars sufficient to do the project, and if this comes in at a lower cost, we can always put that back in the pool for scoring because we still have about a couple years that we can use this money. So I guess I, uh, in terms of yes, yeah, two things for me. Um, Amy says the final rules will not come to the end of the year. We know that broadband is right. a slam dunk. Correct. But more importantly. Um, that is really an underserved area of our community and as flu season and the COVID numbers increase um, the likelihood of some of our children having to quarantine and stay home and not have good internet for school really concerns me that that underserved area they need to have better better equipment to be able to stay at home and do school yeah, I, well, this is a long-term play though, because it won't be done for quite some time. But I, I, I agree. We, well, we, the quicker part, part of the benefit the, of, of the right. the money is is to have <coughs> underserved, right. underserved areas, right. and, and and this project would do that. Right. My concern mm -hmm. is is I I'm okay with this in principle, um, but I would hesitate at this point in time to actually allocate the money mm -hmm. until we know specifically what Gallimari's position is. Well, can't we, like we did f with our, uh, well, I'll just say for our sick time, we set the money aside and we'll draw down on it as we need. Can we not adopt the same principle on this one, where we set the money aside for this, knowing that we're going to have at, at, at that, that eventual cost, uh, at least some portion of it, and then, of course, what we don't end up spending, we'll spend on the other projects that, we, that we'll have pending over the next year or two. So at least we're sending the clear signal, this is important enough for us to fund. This was the purpose of this ARP money, was to, uh, you're right, it's a slam dunk, and, and we are committed to working with them, and just set that aside. It'll be contingent on other fur further decisions and the negotiations with LMRE. But at this point, we can go ahead and proceed and start scoring our other projects. So we'd need a resolution to set aside? To set aside. Yeah. Uh, that, at least that's what I would propose. Does that I, seem reasonable I, or no? I, I would do a soft set aside. Okay, a so, okay, soft right. uh, Because I, I don't want to make a commitment to a firm commitment right. to a project that we don't have a firm commitment back from. Right. Can, can, um, we, yeah. can we push <coughs> LMRE to Great. hurry okay. up on their proposal? Just so you know, the five and a half million for this year is five and a half million. That dollar amount is not going to be reduced. It's the, it's the second, second year. Ask. Yeah. So. We, we, are, um, we have already put together our, our build schedule, which will take 24 months to build out the LMRE and the Guilford Township East of Seven. The densification Seven. project. The densification okay, project. Okay, okay, We're no, also sorry. increasing from 2,100 home served to 8,300 home served. Um, and, and Dave, those are predominantly the, the incremental amount are the homes on the west side of the county from Spencer down toward yeah. Uh, Homer Township take, and in that area. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Take yep. Columbia Road, which is where our backbone is today, coming out of Lodi, mm -hmm. ended up. Take to the west of that, mm -hmm. uh, Yorktown, um, Spencer, Homer, everything that goes to the west and south southwest all the way down to Lodi to the bottom of the county. They'll hit every home because that's the requirement by LMRE that they have two fibers that uh, they will have to hit every single home. That's to position themselves for the uh, smart grid technology in five years. Yeah. So, Dave, would we have the ability, because LMRE is uh, Lorraine, but I am, to go into other counties? Um, we are actually talking to them. Uh, Lit Communities has two NDAs already signed with the remaining three um, sections. I don't know where our play would be. There might be something in it. But at least our entity, Medina Fiber, uh, definitely would build through there. The investors are actually looking at building all the way up into the Toledo area. This would be a first step to come across and up into Toledo and uh, that part of the city. I guess to make it clear, no, as a, uh, obviously 
<coughs> provides, it is clear that this money can, for the underserved areas, for providing uh, broadband. Secondly, make it clear that this, uh, that eventually the county will be paid back for this investment, correct? Uh, it's a six to eight year payback based on okay. the state rate. So, I mean, just those two, I guess those two components, uh, components at least in my mind, uh, validates why we ought to be Have we found out yet? Are we legally allowed to be paid back for art money? Yes. We are? Okay. Yes. So what I would recommend is Amy can go ahead and put together I guess a list of the projects that have already been approved. Any set asides that, sh that we have come up with a total amount that I guess available for scoring for this year which is going to be right around $10 million. You can score and then for that 10 million, and then if for some reason that 5.5 falls through, you could throw that in the mix for next year or, or later, yeah. beginning of next year. Because again, we're really in no hurry to spend the money, but there are projects out there that we need to get started and have some urgency to them. Well, and, and Skip Sipos asked, uh, we had the housing <coughs> work last week, uh, you might see the report, and, and they've got that project that, 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 that for that uh, permanent supportive housing project, and since the, with the grant funding, he does need an answer fairly soon. So I'm hoping fairly soon. Like, could we do October fifteenth? Like, give us another month to really analyze these and get a final number, or is do that we really too need late to wait for that them? long for some of those? I mean, we already said go ahead with the <laughs> number, and I guess yeah, <laughs> well, we, you know. we, we had a, uh, um, a scoring matrix that we were going to look at all these and right. them whatever, and now we're kind of tossing that out the uh, the window. Well, that's why so. I've asked uh, what what is the value of the scoring matrix? So, we keep putting a lot of these off book or right, not scoring exactly. anyway. So exactly. at this point, All this right, is well, like more of like a budget October than October first. Give us two more, yes. a couple more weeks. Yes. Is that better? I would hope um, that we can do it by the end of the month. Okay. I'd, I'd, like, I, I'd like the final number though. Well, after all the set asides. Well, I think some projects need it. We've got the the Granger Township Homeowners right. Association one. Uh, Granger Township is Seville. waiting to, is waiting to, to, to see what we're going to do, mm -hmm. and so there's that that component of it. We have to discuss. Okay, you know, so, so how much? Or so how about if we that. if we set a target for having our scoring done by October fifth? October. Well, th I take it back. Let let's have our discussion on October fifth. Okay. So the Amy, score. how much time do you need to get these things and tabulate them all? If you got ours by October 1st, could they be tagged? Oh, that's the weekend then. Yeah, you don't mind working Saturdays and Sundays, do you? That's like three months. <laughs> I can uh, formulate them whenever you're, you know, if it's the what? end of the prior week and that gives me, you know, that Friday and perhaps Monday to return those to you, I can make them. Okay, so how about, how about if we shoot for September 29th? September 29th. Okay. For scoring. And sure. I we're going to get a sure number, and, and we're, we're okay with the number minus the five and a half? Yes. Yes. In, I'm, I'm, in, in principle, yes. In principle. I think. <laughs> well, a soft set aside. A soft set aside. A soft set aside. All right. Okay. But, but we, yeah. I, I think uh, unanimous, we have unanimous support that the money can be used for broadband, unanimous yes, support yes, that we yes. need to move forward, and as soon as the details can be worked out, we want With LMRE, yes. Yeah, with LMRE yes, and okay. the partners, that we do that. Right. Okay. Acceptably work out. Yes. Well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and I will, if I may, just email you now, you know, just the summary of the projects already allocated with that total. And, and the ones yes, we added please. today. Yes. 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 Right. That will help us. So, okay. Okay, thank you. So I, we can let Skip Sipos know <clears throat> about the... Um, the date. The date, for at least for that particular project. Right. Okay. Okay. Amy, do you have anything else? I do not. Dave, do you have anything else you want to say? I'm good, thanks. John? Right. You want to bring up a housing network meeting we, we met, as you might have seen. Uh, last week, the consultant came in, provided the report. They're continuing to work on a proposal for that. Um, and uh, in conversations with uh, with uh, Skip as well as Bill uh, Titterington, who have been paying for the consultant, uh, the next phase of the planning, uh, they were wondering if the hundred thousand uh, that uh, was uh, uh, set aside by the, the last budget, the state budget for for this uh, 
a homeless shelter could be used for those planning purposes and in communication with Sharon Ray. Right now we're working out the details to acquire that. We are the recipient of that, so we'll have to take those actions. To, but I think then we'll have further discussion as to how to do that for that continuing uh, support in, in the planning. Uh, they're right now engaged in a survey of a lot of providers, getting an idea of, of uh, the, the real needs out there in terms of, uh, of providing the support, as well as uh, the partnerships that are possible for this, especially the supportive services wrap around whatever uh, shelters are, would be constructed. Likewise, Terry Grice attended as well to deal with the, the former jail population uh, that, who has also uh, housing needs. Right. So I think the, these are all part of that discussion and, and the consultant would be the one to help uh, identify those and, and develop a plan. But I think the idea is those costs could come out of that uh, $100,000 that the commissioners receive for the homeless shelter. Okay. Yep. No, okay. Anything else? No. Quick, have you heard anything at the state level about um, the public meetings and the Well, there is a bill pending a bill. They've already had hearings. Uh, the, as you know, the House tried to put uh, put an extension in um, in the budget, and the Senate rejected that. Uh, I know that uh, we're having a CCA board meeting uh, this week. We're probably talking about that. And I know there's been a big push by the various uh, associations to resume that, uh, given what's been going on. Uh, some entities, limited entities, can do that. We know the Port Authority or the uh, Economic Development Corporation can. Uh, and also some of the uh, boards of trustees of the colleges can do it, uh, but um, unfortunately the uh, general purpose governments have, have uh, not been able to do it. There are some cities because of ruling by law directors under home rule. They apparently, once they declare an emergency, have been able to, can, to do some of these, uh, which of course counties don't have. Uh, and so I think, uh, but a lot of local governments are pushing, so right, this is it's basically a, a big push by, by the end of this year to, or at least when they get back. Their uh, House session was canceled this week, Senate's doing some hearings. So I think, uh, well, like I say, I'll, I'll let you know on Friday what the CCO, uh, what our pe people are saying as to where that's going. But a lot of them have been more focused on other issues like redistricting and other yeah. important things. Uh, yeah, so, the vaccination. So do, do you think it would be of any benefit for us to do any kind of a resolution and send it down to the state house and probably say, couldn't hey, hurt. We we would we I, would very much support. Well, our our current reps know that. <laughs> yeah, well, but the rest of them don't. Yeah, and, well, and, uh, they've heard too. And, and, and if yeah, CCAO even yeah. is going to take a policy position, oh, they are. Yeah, um, maybe we could even and sure echo that that policy uh, position. Uh, I think it would be a good thing to have. I, I agree on, on a permanent and basis. I, I absolutely agree. I I, I totally agree that on, on a permanent basis there ought to be some. And I the concern it is is what guardrails are in place to make sure it's not abused. Uh, but I I think generally the public's been better informed because of the ability and, right. and actually attendance in a lot of public entities is actually better during then than afterwards right. uh, because right. it was easier to get on be on Zoom, everybody could see it or be on a, on a, on a kind of platform. And then now that they're in person, it, you have conflicts uh, with schedule. Well, and there's some boards and commissions, I felt that the attendance was better on Zoom. Yeah, it was, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and, absolutely. and I know I, I know. in terms of like uh, some of the planning commissions, uh, uh, Greg Ongst from Brunswick said that as much that they had. It, it was a great ability for them to have experts come in there with their, with uh, and schedule it uh, mm -hmm. when they had the ability to do that. Right. And and it reduces can. a lot of conflicts. You don't have to travel for a half Absolutely. hour or an hour to get someplace. You can be more places. Exactly so. right. So yeah, well, I'll, I'll I'll give you an answer to that after Friday okay. after the board right. meeting. Very so. good. Okay. Do you have anything? Um, I just have uh, one thing. Noaka met um, Friday the uh, board meeting, and um, a couple things uh, just of, of import. Uh, Representative Gibbs has uh, asked for an earmark for $3.2 million, $3 million to do a roundabout at River Sticks in 162. Uh, that's on the Noaka slate, and uh, they're basically uh, good with it if the money comes through. So uh, there's a possibility that uh, we may have a, another roundabout in Madame County. Um, they also talked about a comprehensive economic development program that would be a coalescence of all the economic development programs throughout the five county region. Um, they, they need to have this kind of a program in place to access about uh, $3 billion in federal economic development funds. 
So it's something that they uh, want to get in place in, in place relatively quickly to access those funds. And their uh, sensible push is to connect transportation to economic development. Um, the question is, and I've talked to Bethany Dentler, is, is uh, will there be any scope creep and will they try to uh, discourage economic development in one area to the benefit of economic development in another area for any number of transportation related reasons. So that uh, that remains to be seen. But those were the uh, the important points that came out of that meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, they also had the annual meeting, um, which uh, was just basically a recap of the year and the mm -hmm. long range plan that we gone over with the fine tooth comb. Did, did the uh, modification of facility planning area uh, that was tabled the prior meeting, did that come back? Uh, it did not. There were like three or four other FPA amendments, mostly right. in Lorraine County, okay. that were voted on and approved. Okay, so um, that one wasn't removed from the table then? Um, it well, still it's still tabled. It's yeah. still tabled. It, 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 it was okay. not removed from the table, okay. correct. Right. So, yeah, right. it's still hanging out there. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Ron, did you have anything? No. All right, can I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Yeah.